<laughs> so that's when she's, you know, she got very concerned. And she said, you cannot be doing everything. And you know, I was such a hypocrite. Because one of the stories I often tell, especially young mothers, you see mothers really overwhelm themselves, do they not? And women try to do everything. And I always remind them, what does the airline attendant say to you when they're demonstrating the oxygen? If you have a child or someone next to you who needs your help, put your own oxygen on first. Isn't that a great metaphor? Yeah. And women so seldom do it. Not only was I not doing it, I was giving every bit of oxygen I had away to other people. Mm -hmm. And so I needed to slow it down a bit. I also knew that I had to face the reality that it was time for me to take a leave because I but, couldn't really be involved but, but, but go more slowly into that because I found that uh, as, as a journalist myself and understanding where you were coming from, I, I, I felt that it was heavy handed when your newspaper decided they needed to put an editorial on the front page of the paper about your about your about who you are. Well, it was on the front of the um, forum section. The forum, and yeah, okay. it was. I wasn't happy about that. That I thought, you know, we'd made it clear I was married to Sherrod Brown. I didn't think there was a lot of confusion about that. But our, it was a form. It it was a, well. What Go I thought ahead. I, was, I didn't it have was some <laughs> friends in the paper that I thought I did have. They were saying, you know, one guy down in Cincinnati, Ohio, Southern Ohio, had, who worked out of his home, said I didn't even know she was married to Sherrod Brown. I'd been married to him for a year and a half, and we had put it in the paper. So clearly, he wasn't even reading our paper, but. Um, the editor decided that bloggers were going after me some, so he had to make it clear to everyone that I knew the parameters and I was not going to commit any ethical um, co conflicts, which mm -hmm. really is offensive. But yeah, he let well. me read it ahead of time and he ran it, and that just gave the bloggers a heads up because he cited a blog as one of the reasons he had to do this. It was an anonymous blogger, as they so, so often are, especially in politics, uh, accusing me of doing something I hadn't done mm -hmm. in public. And, from Other than on. sleeping in your car and yeah, he didn't even know that. <laughs> um, so that was sort of a, it started the downward spiral. I, I started to look at what was happening and I was reining myself in on topics for fear of looking that I was yeah. at all, you know, trying to echo Sherrod's right. positions. Um, my friends, dear friends, who are political writers, who I thought would probably recuse themselves. I mean, I had been in the delivery room for the birth of one of their children. Another one I had coached his daughter in softball for five years. And another one had come to our wedding. None of them recused themselves from the race. None of them identified themselves as close friends of mine. Well, so I'm giving everything except my underwear size in public. That's not happening on their side. And they were bending over backwards to show no prejudice in favor mm. of Sherrod. So they were just hammering him. We're the largest paper in Ohio. So I'm watching all this. I can't be in any public appearances with Sherrod. You know, I'm not speaking for him. I'm doing a lot of the strategy behind the scenes, which right. is part of the reason I was getting tired is on all the calls. And it just wasn't working. And I thought, I, and I say this in the book, I think especially women can identify with this. Many times we end up having to make a choice that doesn't really feel very good for us, but is right for everyone around us, the people we care about. And I Which just in the end time. makes it good for us. Ultimately, you hope. Well, but, because sometimes if all of them are happy, yeah. you can go take a nap. You know? <laughs> yeah, that, that was what was missing, was the nap part, <laughs> the I guess. the nap but, part. But I did, I mean, I was really scared. I'm going to be honest with you. I was very scared about what would happen well, to me. In the well, end somebody said to you, I assume it was a friend who said, uh, you know, Connie, face it, the media aren't your friends. My anymore. boss, my yeah. editor, and dear friends. That Warner. was a cold glass of water in the face, yeah, wasn't it? Yeah, but he was right. It, well, it, but still, the, 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 the coming to terms with that. Yeah. yeah, because I went from being a colleague to a possible source in the newsroom. And so I found myself isolating myself more. They were isolating from me because they didn't want us to have a conversation that they would feel they need to right. follow up on. So small talk kind of evaporated in much of the newsroom for me. And I don't mean poor, poor me. My editor at Random House has a great saying, no whining on the yacht. Yeah, right, you right, know, We right. won. I've got a great job. But it was a difficult but, time. But, but, but knowing what you know and what you've been through, do you think that that would be advice for almost any political spouse that if you had a full-time job, it's almost impossible to do it, regardless of whether it's no. journalism. Because the, the time that's consumed being on the campaign trail, and if you're going to get involved in the campaign, yeah. don't, don't you feel you had to do it 100%? Well, I did. Um, I think there are a lot of wives who have um, a little more balance. And part of it was, <laughs> what was I going to do? I yeah. mean, once I left my job, I just couldn't sit around the house all the time. Yeah. So I may as well be involved. I had already done a lot of public speaking, so I was comfortable with that. Yeah, and I traveled a lot with my husband, but I don't think it means necessarily, although probably at the presidential level. Yeah. Like it's all remember what happened to poor Howard Dean's wife. And yeah. She was being criticized for not showing up and not being there. And yeah. she was a doctor yeah. with patients who relied on her and counted on her. I mean, yeah. you know, I wasn't saying Do you lives. ever envision that changing? Hmm. Uh, I'm an optimist. Yeah, I yeah. think you know we have more and more career women married to candidates. Uh, were you able to go back to your job without any hard feelings toward anyone? 
Well, that's where the no whining on the yacht comes from, because... Um, yeah, but I'm talking about down yeah, in here. Yeah, you know, I mean... Only did it one, change your relationship yes. with it? Did. Well, part of it is only one newspaper in the state endorsed Sherrod, and it wasn't my paper. Yeah. And he won by almost 13 points. So I've often, I mean, I've argued a long time against newspaper endorsements at this level because they don't make a difference, in the, it, but they complicate the lives of the reporters covering the race then. Yeah. Um, I am aware that I'm more careful who I talk to. I mean, it, my boss said to me when I came back. You're just, more, you're just a little more grown up, I guess, about the I don't know. Dynamic. I always thought it was more grown up to be vulnerable and willing to make mistakes publicly. Yeah. I think that's actually a more grown up way to live your life because it seems to me rather childish to pretend you're perfect all the time because yeah. who can do that? So I'm just a little more careful, but I, I don't mean to say it's not a great place. I'm still in the newsroom a lot. And my boss said to me recently, well, you're a different person now. And I said, no, I'm the same person. My life is different. But I'm still the same person, yeah. and I think they'll get used to me over time. You know, it's well. I mean, you've been back for a while now, haven't you? Since the end of January. Yeah. So but I have had two books come out, and yeah. Now, now you're, you, you you jump into the campaign. You got all these young people running around telling you what to do. Yes, and, which uh, explains why we'd have red eye flights to and California. <laughs> right. People have your age scheduling you. And uh, again, a friend of yours says, uh, "No one screws with the wife." Yeah. So that was a moment of reckoning for you, and, and yeah. then you sort of went in and took a little more control. Well, over. I remember early in the campaign, these two men started telling me, "Well, okay, you need to wear this, you're gonna need this," and they would just start, and they didn't even ask if they could talk to me about this. And I also, I just said, "Wait, wait, 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 never confuse yourselves with someone who gives me orders." Okay? <laughs> and they just kind of started, you know, how they do that blinking thing. Oh, oh, okay, okay, and okay. and I realized that, and Sharon was very good at this. It comes from the top. If the candidate isn't making it clear how his wife, you know, I say this to, I hear this a lot from congressional wives. Mm -hmm. They feel that the staffs treat them very badly. And I said, you got to talk to your husbands. That's mm -hmm. coming from the top. They yeah. got to lay down the ground rules here that you, they don't treat you like this. Um, and I do think that very strongly because you can be as assertive as you want, but if they think you can get away with it because your husband doesn't care, um, and that's appalling to me. I would so love to be uh, a fly on a wall when you do attend one of the Senate spouse lunches, <laughs> I, if, if you speak, because I'm sure that you tell them what you think. Um, <laughs> I mean, I hope you do. Well, I, I did speak to the Congressional Club. It was the toughest audience I've had. Yeah. yeah. Were they nodding or shaking um, their heads? They said a lot to me privately, yeah. but publicly it was really a quiet room. Yeah. And it was really sobering. To, yeah. you know, and well, I don't mean that critically of them. I just, no, because it's a learning curve. Yeah. And, it, uh, and, and maybe if, if there is a, uh, a woman in the White House, some of those things will yeah. ease up and change. Um, so you're campaigning, you're, you're running against Mike DeWine, who I called Tom DeWine on my blog, but Mike DeWine. And um, he goes negative. He goes yeah. negative with an ad that that, yeah. that has the twin towers, and right. you and you know Carl Rove's behind that. Yes, we, in fact, the New York Times confirmed it two weeks later. And um, uh, but the interesting thing is, you were figuring that he might go more negative, and that it would involve Sherrod's first wife. Right. And you were put in the very peculiar position of having to do a campaign commercial with his ex-wife. Can I feel your love here? <laughs> <laughs> And I'm thinking, does it really Does it really get to that? Yeah, it does, and here's why. One of the things we learned from the Kerry campaign, particularly in Ohio, is anybody goes after you, you hit back. You know, the, the, the motto was respond, pivot, and deck them. And the idea being, you don't take fault, you don't take lies sitting down. You don't let them say That's things that aren't true. Game. And way back when, there were some allegations that she had since, has since recanted, but she made against Sharon, and we heard, through a reporter actually first, that they were going to use it in an ad. And that had been that had happened to share before in the past. So, so we negotiated, and she agreed with her two daughters and my daughter. My son was out of town that um, weekend, and we got an ad ready. And then we let him know quietly, and you know, we just I started. I wasn't so quiet. I'd give speeches, and they you'd always get somebody raising, "What are you going to do if they're unfair and they're attacks?" Well, let me tell you what we're going to do. And I'd say, and Sharon's ex-wife and I have an ad waiting for him too. And you, you just see the room go, ooh. Yeah. And now uh, we never had to use it. 